It's Scott Manley here, spy master for the Kerbal Space Agency, and today we are back with the spy satellite. Now this has been updated a little for Kerbal Space Program 0.18. The re reaction wheels still work, but they are replaced by storage batteries instead of re um, RCS tanks. We have RCS on this as well. The optical system now looks a whole lot better since it uses um it uses one of those ram air intakes because it makes it look like a camera to be honest the camera system has been updated by ramon and the the mech jeb development team i guess and now it actually works for these super high zooms so here we are flying over Kerbal Space Center and zooming in on the features that we can see. First of all, we're looking at that airfield that is just across the water. Not much detail to be had at this range. This is something like 90 or one degree um, field of view here. So there's a lot to be seen. We just pan over a little and of course you can see just how close Kerbal Space Center is to this. A lot more detail on this to be seen from orbit. You can see everything. You can see the you can even see the radar dish and uh, you can see a little pink square there from a plane that is sitting on the runway waiting to take off. I believe Jebediah is sitting in that and has been very patient because I keep changing to him and he's still there. Uh, I might show you what that is. Of course, the other places we can see, we can only really see the large stuff from the air. So flying over the desert, if we look in the right place, we can in fact see the pyramid complex in the middle of the desert. That is visible from orbit. And with a bit of zoom, when we go to maximum zoom, you can actually make out all six pyramids in this. Of course, you can't tell that if you try to walk on them, they will freeze you there. But uh, perhaps that's the best way to study it from a distance. Now, the spy satellite is in a polar orbit, a 90 degree polar orbit. This is not like a real spy satellite that you would find on Earth. Many spy satellites and uh, Earth observation satellites around Earth are in what's called a sun synchronous orbit. And the idea is the orbit is inclined in such a way that the non-spherical nature of the Earth provides a bit of a, a pull on the orbit and it will rotate with respect to the sun. So this means that when the cameras pass over a, a location, they're always the sun is always in the same position in the sky and they can get better information, more consistent. So actually, yeah, with this orbit, if you pass over the pyramids almost in the same orbit, you can pass pretty close to the other space center. And that too is visible from orbit. Although there's not nearly the same level of detail that we see in the Kerbal Space Center. Even when we fly right over, first of all, the, the radar dish is gone. It's All you can see is a pad where it should be sitting. You can't see any of the buildings. It looks like it looks like you only see the, the, the foundations and not the, not the buildings. So it looks, I don't know, I guess they're building this thing still. Who knows? Now, another type of orbit that's very common for uh, observation satellites is the Molnia orbit. And this is basically a high eccentricity, high inclination orbit that basically makes it hang in the sky at high latitudes. It's like the nearest you can get to geostationary orbits for high latitudes if you have multiple satellites. And uh, it's actually used for com communication satellites as well over Russia and the US. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, anything that is a spy satellite can also be used pretty well for looking at, the st at uh, other planets and whatever. In fact, you know, your typical US spy satellite pretty much looks like the Hubble Space Telescope. And that, of course, puts constraints on how much detail you can see. If you, the, the detail that comes from the HST is kind of the detail you would expect from a spy satellite. Obviously, there's some subtle differences. But yeah, let's uh, turn this thing around. Oh, yeah, you can also study the, study the uh, river networks from space, should you be so inclined. And yeah, this is the... Um, this is the island at the core of the, the little meteorite crater. A lot of people kept on saying, oh, there has to be something there. You have to go there and look at it. You have to go there. Nothing there. Nothing there. I looked several times and, oh, wait a second. What's this I'm seeing? You know that that uh, abandoned island, that remote island, that would make a perfect base for taking over the world. 
and perhaps whoever lives there doesn't like these spy satellites prying in. And so they deploy their anti-satellite weapon, the anti Satellizer 1000. Actually, I just made that name up there. I hadn't written this script. So yeah, this is us trying to get up, and this took lots and lots of saves to get right. We basically aim to get the timing right. We launched at an exact. Um, we launched at exactly forty-eight minutes and thirty-two seconds, and with the mech jab auto launch, that would put me very close. And then it was just a case of adjusting using the final stage using RCS to get my approach distance down to one meter. And there, 10 meters, nine meters. Oh, no, going the other way. This is all trial error. There's down to one meter. Oh, three meters, one, yes, 0.7 meters. That should surely impact this thing at a whopping 600 meters per second. It should do a lot of damage. Wait, wait, what happened? Ah. Yeah, so uh, it's actually very hard to make things collide at really high speed. So I had to go in and edit the save file. And uh, this is what it would look like if I, when I finally made it work. It would be a shame, a shame I had to do this. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, the, I love the smell of destruction in the morning. Well, the optical chain's fine, but the sensors are all destroyed. Well, hopefully they won't go looking there anymore. However, I fear I may have awoken something else, perhaps an arms race in space. But for now, I will bid you farewell. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.